Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Thank you for coming back to my YouTube channel today. I am going to be making some home decor projects using my paper crafting supplies. Project number one is a little clipboard with a piece that could be a card front, but I am going to make this larger size piece using the Retro Diamond Stencil Set from Trinity Stamps. There are three stencils in this set that you layer up together. So this is stencil A on some peach colored cardstock I'm bringing in Rusty Hinge, giving this a really like fun fall look with this darker kind of pumpkin-y color. I love how this looks on the colored cardstock. And here you can see what layer number one, it's really layer A, looks like. And then I'll add a second layer with stencil B and fossilized amber. This is like a really like golden yellow. It's like perfect for my fall theme that I'm going for. So there's both layers. You could leave it just like this. I think it looks so good like that. But there's also this stencil here where you could add another layer. I'm going to offset mine and add some stitching. Now there is a cover plate die that coordinates with this stencil set. It's the Argyle stitched plate and you can stitch die cut that first it'll put the stitching into your cardstock and then use the stencil over the top of it it is more of a six by six size and i want this whole entire panel nine by six to have some stitching so when i offset it i'm just making sure that it's going through the orange triangles and then i'm going to rotate my stencil and do the stitching in the other direction again only going through the center of the orange diamonds. I think I just said triangles, didn't I? <laughs> They're diamonds. Yeah, they are. So adding some stitching, I'm just using a black Sharpie marker. That's what I had and it worked out really good just how I wanted it to be. So now I am going to cut the center out of this with an A7 modern embossed edge rectangle. It's the third from the largest and I tried to get it right in the center. And then I have the outer piece. I trimmed off the excess that didn't get stenciled and I'm mounting that onto this rusty color piece of paper that is nine by six. But what I'm gonna do is cut out a layer for the patterned paper piece that I just cut out using the center of this panel. So I'm not completely covering it. I'm not gonna waste it. You'll see how I layer it up just like this. So I put my first panel on the piece I just cut out and then my original die cut center piece. All right, we're gonna set that aside and do some stamping with this filled with gratitude image. I love this envelope bursting with the, the fall foliage here. It's so pretty. I did stamp that a couple times with my VersaFine Onyx Black Ink before adding on some clear embossing powder. And I love embossing powder because, and for watercoloring, I'm gonna watercolor this image and it just makes a nice edge so my watercolor doesn't like, <clears throat> you know, sneak over to the next leaf and mix with that. So I am going to wet the leaf first with some water that I want to watercolor. These are my Arteza watercolors. Um, I'll have them linked for you below if you're interested, as well as all the other things I'm using today. And I'm adding some yellow here, just a really light wash of color. You can always go back and add more. Also, <clears throat> I'm not a professional watercolorist. I watercolor because I have fun doing it. It's very relaxing and I really enjoy just sitting and painting this out. So I'm going to greatly speed this up. I'm just, like I said, putting down a wash of color and then going back and adding shadows where I want to. And I'm just loving adding in all the different fall colors. And sometimes, I don't know if this happens to you, on these images like this, is it kind of hard for you to see like where one leaf ends and the next one begins and what's underneath and so what I try to do is just do the part that I know for sure and then I can always go back once I fill things in and um, realize oh that's part of this and I can recolor that or paint that part so um, I don't know if that happens to you but that definitely happens to me and I had to do that on some of these leaves right here but also I did do some shadowing with a like really watered down brown 
paint for the envelope itself, which I don't show. It's just really, really simple. But there is the basic coloring of this um, envelope, and I did a little more blending and shadowing after I stopped recording, and you might be able to see the really light shadowing on the envelope here. So I die cut that out, and before I was going to mount it, I really wanted to define the center of this. Now, this panel that I'm making right here could very easily be turned into a card, and don't you ever feel like some cards you could really just display for a while because they're so cute? <laughs> so that you could easily take a card and set it up in your decor, but this one I made specifically to be a home decor piece. I have this um, clipboard that is on an easel. It's an easel itself, and I just really like to make new things to put on there and incorporate that into my um, decor for different seasons. So I put some vintage photo on the edge of this and I splattered it, and that's really going to help draw the eye into the center and make this part of the project really be the focus. So now I'm going to stamp the sentiment that goes with this little envelope. It says filled with gratitude on some vellum with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. So I can also emboss this. So it'll also have that like raised up and shiny look that I love. So on with the clear powder. I did treat all of my paper with an anti-static powder before doing my stamping and embossing. And that just helps the powder not stick randomly to the paper and only stick to your stamped image. So I am wrapping the ends of the vellum around my panel, securing it to the back with this double stick tape, and that's going to hold it really well. I um, never have to worry about that coming off. So next, I wanted my envelope to be like raised up off the paper, so I backed it with another die cut, which I die cut from some really thick cardstock. So that's gonna pop it up just a little bit off the paper, and I really love that look. Actually, I think I did go back and add a third one. So it's three layers, the stamp layer and then two plain cut ones. Now I put a little glue on my finger here and rubbed it behind the vellum because I wanted it to come in contact more with the background itself. It was kind of puffed up too much. So I did that and doing that you can barely see the glue behind it. Okay, now we're moving on to that second layer. I am going crazy here, but I wanted to add a little something to the edge of this panel that was more subtle than the ink blending. So I have these sun-kissed copper gilding flakes. It is so fun, a little bit messy. I'm not going to lie about that, but I'm okay getting messy every once in a while. I have a craft room. I can have a dedicated space to keep my mess in. Also, the Swiffer works really good for picking up that excess gilding bits left over. So um, now I'm gluing this in place onto that frame and I've got the gilding all the way around there, which I just did with a two-way glue pen, by the way. I traced where I wanted the gilding flakes to be with that two-way glue and put it on with my finger, brushed off the excess. It's super easy to use. Now that all my layers are adhered together, it's time to embellish with this fall sunset or autumn sunset pack of leaves. Now, some of the leaves are kind of purpley, but also when you turn them in the light, they kind of reflect other colors and will look a little bit more red, like the red I have in my leaves, and I thought they were just a really fun, shiny addition to this. So, what do you think? I think they're so pretty, and they look like they're kind of falling out of that envelope too. So now it's time to stick this onto my clipboard. There it is. And you can see the top of the clipboard has a little spot that is perfect for a ribbon. Now, I hardly ever use ribbon in my paper crafting anymore, but I have this ribbon in my stash. It has a nice texture to it. It's that golden yellow color. And I'm going to tie a nice little bow and stick that right on that metal part of the clipboard. So I'm just playing with this until I get the bow shape that I want. I trimmed off the edges and I'll stick it down with a giant glue dot. I have these glue dots left over from a card kit from several years ago, but they work perfect for things like this. So there is my little home decor clipboard project. I think it turned out really, really fun. And I will show it to you here on my mantle in just a second. I have changed it a little bit since I took this video. Just keep adding in more things that I find. See that white owl? I found that at the dollar store and I have a white owl Scentsy burner and it is similar to that, but I want to paint that owl. So if you have any ideas 
on how I should paint that owl, leave it in the comments below. Maybe I'll share it on here once I decide how I want to paint it. Okay, project number two. I found this strip of frames at the thrift store. I really liked the texture on them, but I don't want to keep them attached together with this ribbon with the crown at the top. I want to be able to put a little decor piece that I make on my tiered tray. So I'm going to use the rectangular one and we're going to stamp a little insert. And in order to do that, I need to measure out what size my paper should be because the inserts in there, not helpful. No, not at all. <laughs> so I'll just bring out my ruler and measure that. And it's going to be approximately two and a half inches by three and a half inches. I went just a hair under and I cut out my watercolor paper, which is the same paper I used for my first project. And I'm using this thankful and grateful stamp set this time. But before I stamp it down, I wanted to have fun with my background. So I have that same vintage photo ink. I put it on my glass mat, just smushed it on there, sprayed it with water, and then I'm going to make an inky background with it. So I am going to press it into the ink, then dry it with my heat tool, and I can pick up any ink that like pools. And I'm gonna do a few layers of this. I think that's where the magic is, and I haven't done ink smooshing in a while, but I love creating my own backgrounds, and this is just another fun way to do that. You could add a different color in here if you wanted, but this is gonna be a really small project. So I felt sticking to one color with some layers was gonna be the perfect thing. So here we go with layer number three, and this is building up just how I want. I like when I pick up any excess ink with my paper towel there, it leaves like a little white spot. I love that, right in the middle of the dark ink. And then if you dry the ink enough and you pick it up, you get like a dark edge, almost like a coffee stain. <gasps> I love it. It's so much fun. If you haven't done ink smooshing, give it a try. And then, of course, I had leftover ink, so I'm going to splatter, of course, right? <laughs> and I also let that dry for a minute and set it with my heat tool. And you can see here how yummy those splatters are. So now that this is completely dry, I can go ahead, treat it with my anti-static and stamp it with that cute little arrangement of pumpkins and whatnot. So again, Versafine Onyx Black Ink. And I'm going to stamp that a few times before I actually sprinkle the powder on. I'm just showing you one time, but the Misty allows me to stamp it more than one time. And it's my favorite tool. One of my favorite tools. I shouldn't say that. Now my other tools are in this room listening to me and feeling very sad because I love to emboss. I love gel press prints. I love Glimmer Hot Foil. So many fun tools, right? Tell me what your favorite tool is or maybe a tool that you're in love with right now in your craft room. Let me know what it is in the comments below. Okay, so time to watercolor just as before. Even with that inky background, I can go ahead and watercolor out my images. And this one just as fun as that envelope. And I loved playing with the different colors. For my little pumpkin, I went with my favorite color. Oh, I can't wait to show you that one. But first, let's finish the big pumpkin. And it is just layers of orange paint. And I can come back in, add my details, and it, make it as dark as I want. So on to the second pumpkin. I wanted this, I call it sea foam green. It's like a really light teal. I love this color. This is like my favorite color. So pumpkins in this color make me really happy. So I'm gonna just paint that on. And at first it's a really light layer and then I'll come back and do a second layer and you'll see how it totally just pops. So this right here, this pumpkin is going to be the inspiration for my frame and altering the frame. You'll see how that comes together. So now you can see all the water coloring all done. And then I wanted to ground it a little bit so it wasn't just floating there. So I got some brown paint and just darkened up underneath, adding it a little bit of a shadow. And that really helps make it look like it's not floating there. So look at that. It's so cool. Okay, so I laid it on the frame and I was like, you could totally just put it in the black frame. But... I want to get crafty. <laughs> so I have this paint, it's called Patina. And um, it's just like paint I bought for a dollar at Walmart, 98 cents, something like that. And I'm just painting it on with a foam brush. Now this frame is very um, glossy. 
and plasticky feeling. And so you can see the paint is not going to be full coverage. If I wanted full coverage, I probably would have found like a spray paint and done uh, a coat with that. And that would have been a lot more smooth and even and all of that. But I like to be, um, I like to have kind of like a vintage look or a little grungy look. So after I painted that on, I decided, okay, I am going to really go for this grungy look. So I'm going back over this with a baby wipe and a little bit of a wet paintbrush and just removing a little bit of that paint, letting more of the black show through. Then I came in with some gold metallic paint, also just bought at Walmart or somewhere like that. Brushing that on, you can still see some of that patina paint is showing through. So I'm just layering this up. Some of the black is going to show through. And I'm really loving how this is coming together. And why not add a little bit of that sun-kissed <laughs> gilding flakes, right? There's still some wet areas here. Now, when I got to areas that weren't as wet, I just put a little dab of glue on my finger and kind of rubbed it on so I could have um, more of the gilding flakes where I wanted them once that paint had dried. And I thought it was just a really fun look. This kind of looks like it's maybe was found in a treasure chest or something, but you can see some of that patina still showing through. I've got the copper, the gold, and it really plays well with my um, different colors in my watercolored image. So I made sure the glass was nice and clean and then I put my picture right in there and it's like pretty simple like that's pretty much it. Um, but I like to stamp on the glass when I make projects like this. So if you're going to do this, you need stays on ink or something like that. I have white stays on ink and I, you know, I, the glass would not come out of this frame. So I'm using a little palette knife to pick up my stamp, ink it up, and it kind of slid. So I just wiped it off really fast right away with my baby wipe and then dried it to make sure there was no moisture there and then went ahead and tried again. And the palette knife actually worked really well for letting me get down in there um, and around that frame. So I was really happy with that. Check it out. Also, if you do this and you stamp with stays on, you need to clean your stamp off immediately with that white ink. And I like to use a little bit of soap on it and it cleans off really good if you um, do it right away. So there is my framed piece. Oh my gosh. I love how it turned out. Here's my tiered tray. Um, this is, I have a little like treat area in my kitchen. Um, and this is sitting on my tiered tray in that area. So that's a little bit of my fall decor. I hope that you enjoyed this video, a little break from cards, but also these ideas could easily be translated into card making, right? So thank you so much for stopping by and letting me share this with you. I really like having the opportunity to make something that's not a card on occasion. Do you? Do you like that? Do you make things that aren't cards? I like tags and little gifts too. So anyways, I have all the products linked for you below so you can check that out. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe because I have new paper crafting videos for you all the time. And I will see you on the next one. Happy stamping. Bye.